Okay, so you should have just watched the documentation from Taishing Shi's uh, one-year performance. Um, really one of the more remarkable projects in the history of art, I think. Um, uh, really very demanding, but also uh, uh, really yeah, worth, worth talking about and thinking about. Um, so uh, Taishing Shi is, is, I suppose, uh, an American artist in some ways. He, um, he was living and working in New York City when he, when he made these pieces in the, between 1978 and 1986. It's important to know that she arrived in the United States, though, from Taiwan in 1974 um, as an illegal alien. And he remained, uh, he remained illegal um, until, until he was awarded amnesty or, or got amnesty in 1988. Um, so all while he's doing these one-year performances that I'm going to talk about, it's important to recognize that he's both an, an immigrant, uh, a Taiwanese immigrant to the United States and living um, as an uh, illegal alien um, in the official terminology. I use that terminology here. I, I, I don't mean to bother anyone with it, but uh, a notable art historian, Fraser Ward, um, writes about Taishing Shi in terms of sort of accepting, not, not accepting, uh, but confronting this status as both illegal and alien at the same time. And that this in some ways speaks to what uh, what Taishing Shi is doing here. So um, you should have seen from the documentation, uh, the one year performance you looked at was Time Clock Piece. This was uh, in 1980. Um, this is a piece where uh, every hour Taishing Shi uh, punched a time clock in, uh, for, for an entire year. So never sleeping more than an hour, always having to be back to the studio to punch his time clock in this kind of absurdist role uh, of, uh, of the worker, right? And I think we could immediately strike us as critical that um, in this performance, he's playing the role of the worker, of the person who constantly needs to be uh, punching in their time card uh, at a time when he cannot have employment, right? He can't, he can't go out and get a job as a, an illegal alien in the United States. Um, so there's sort of a sense of, of being the worker, of occupying this uh, marginal, unsafe position, uh, but al also also performing that, right? Uh, of taking that up as a kind of, as a kind of performance and to, as he says, consume time or, or accept the passing of time by setting up th these conditions. And so the documentation of these performances is really important to think about. And I, I think in, in this section, it's, it's really worth thinking about, uh, about how documentation either does or doesn't give us the experience of the piece, right? Like what is documentation itself supposed to do for, for a durational performance piece, like a one-year performance? When we look at the images, this is a this is a gallery view of how these are installed. Um, individual images along the wall, so every uh, every shot right from every hour of the year lined up, so you can see the passage of time marked by this. Of course, in the film documentation that you saw, that happens more rapidly in the form of stop motion animation, um, and there is this this really, I think, interesting. Uh, experience of watching this right and trying to imagine like first of all like what the experience would have been like but also why this would have been the case and previously for burden and these other figures i gave you some autobiograph autobiographical background uh, on this but um the argument that again uh, that this art historian fraser ward lays out is that these are in fact or that taishing she is really negating subjectivity. That in some ways, his, his confrontation of being an illegal alien, this non-person within society, this person who's marked by being excluded, by being outside, that through these durational performances, that's in some ways confronting that lack of subjectivity and that that lack of subjectivity is in fact what marks the entire experience. Um, because there is no way to look at a photo. This is from his very first one year performance cage piece from 1978, where he lived inside this cage for an entire year. 
uh, his friends would come in and give him food and water as needed. Um, you can see the markings on the wall here where he marked out day after day after day to count down the days that he had left in this performance, living inside, uh, living inside this cage, right? Not going outside, not, uh, not giving himself the, the chance to be in the world, right? And if that is a comment on subjectivity, it's very much about the negation of, of that subjectivity, particularly when you think about, again, thinking about systems of power or systems of control, um, and that here, the kind of uh, the kind of marking that you get is one uh, is one that's really working against our sense uh, of being able to understand um, or confront or experience a performance of living, an experience of passing time for an entire year inside of this cage. Right. Same thing with uh, with the other pieces in this outdoor piece from 1981 to 82. You can find performance documentation of this uh, online, perhaps. I know there's a long, there's a half an hour video of this that I usually show, but um, but I won't for the sake of time here. Uh, from the title, right, you can again tell uh, what this piece is. He left his apartment, um, rented out his apartment, and lived outside for for a full year. So here, right, he's performing a kind of homelessness. He isn't necessarily homeless uh, and no one on the street would know that he's performing an art piece that's the other thing too right there's no real differentiation there's no separation between a real act uh, and an act in his work right he's on the street living as a homeless person but anyone who encounters him doesn't know that right so when he's uh, building a fire uh, by the water to stay warm or uh, there's video documentation or film documentation again of him taking baths in the East River. Um, this is just seen as uh, as a homeless man, not as an artist sort of enacting something, right? Um, so there is maybe something of like a, a hardcore meditative thing that we could get into here. Um, but again, I'm not I'm not exactly sure that that's that's the direction to go when you fo follow the documentation and you think about this like abstract visualization, right? All of this data, this that what this is giving you is ha where he was on this day. So on September 26th, uh, which was yesterday, uh, we're almost doing this on a year anniversary of my recording it at least. 7:40 a.m. woke up. 10:25 p.m. I slept. 4 20 a.m. I bought breakfast on uh, 6th Avenue. 6.35, I bought dinner. All of these marked out. But that can in no way, again, give us the experience, right? This, this documentation, this abstract documentation or visual documentation doesn't allow us an interior, right? That doesn't give us an interior view of what his experience is or what life was like or what this, uh, or what it would have been to live outside for a year. Um, and in this way, right, uh, particularly again, as an, as an illegal immigrant at the time, this in some ways, uh, again, that Ward argues is that this is performing a kind of invisibility or a lack of recognition. Um, or, or a being tethered to something um, that, that you can't detach from, right? This, this, uh, this experience or this marking of the name illegal alien. Again, uh, very crucial for thinking about. Um, and one other piece from 83 to 84, his rope piece, uh, where he, he remained tied to, to this woman for the entire year, right? Living a whole year connected by a rope to another person. And then finally, in 1985, I think it was 1984-5 or 85-6, he has a piece where he stops making art for a year. And that's the, that's the project. No art, no making, no nothing, no objects. Uh, and that idea of having a performance that's not creating an object is something we'll, we'll look at and speak about in a moment. Um, but again, the, these kind of uh, extreme performances, I think, give us uh, a different kind of confrontation with thinking about autobiography. Like, I think it's something that you want to do. You want to say, like, why did you do this? Like, what was the point of doing this? 
uh, and Taishing, she says in interviews, this is what life is, the passage of time. It's not about how to pass the time, but about the acceptance of the time passing. I know people think of my work as spiritual, but really it's just that I consume time. That's all. It's kind of hard to accept. That's what he says. He consumes time. That's all. But I think that that, that provides a, a really huge challenge for both performance uh, and duration and for thinking about the collapsing uh, of art and real life into something that's completely unnoticeable or unseen, that any time he's doing anything, this now becomes something that's both an art act, but also a real act of, uh, of him trying to survive, uh, of him passing the time as someone needing to survive um, during, during all of these year performances. Um, and these gained sort of great acclaim now. He doesn't make work anymore. Uh, he, he keeps building the documents and archives. Uh, but the, the fact that this still speaks to, the, to a kind of moment of, uh, uh, of performance uh, and potentially identity. Um, but, uh, but that, again, seems almost too abstracted from, um, from just thinking through the reality of time passing, the consumption of time, uh, and how a performance artist in particular might confront that question.